Hey, this is Taryn with The Remote Yogi, and I'm psyched to introduce you today to Connor McCreesh. Connor is a dear friend, but also a fitness genius, a social media guru, a lover of anything related to learning. He recently sold his fitness business for over six figures after just launching it a year and a half ago. He's obsessed with personal growth, creating a life that's shaped around his core values, and helping others to do the same. So Connor, I've been wanting to do this interview for a while. I've been chatting with you about it because I think the reason we got along so well in the very beginning was because we are very growth mindset kind of people. Like we really believe in our growth and so we kind of work together on businesses and fitness throughout the year. Um, so I'm excited to kind of dive into like health and wellness for part one of this interview and then dive into more of the business stuff that you're doing for part two. Um, so just kind of kick it off. Do you want to tell me more about like what got you interested in this whole like growth mindset and like personal development mm -hmm. and all that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I've got vague ideas about how this got going, but if I completely go off the tracks, uh, you can remind me. But um, so I, I kind of didn't really realize it for um, for a long time. So when I was about 15, I ended up doing some work experience at a balloon factory that made the balloons that Richard Branson used to fly around the world. And so I saw this video of this lunatic flying around the world in these giant hot air balloons at the end of this kind of work experience. And I thought that, you know, that seemed like a kind of fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I went to the, I think it was a charity store and I found his autobiography. I bought that and that was the first book I'd ever read. And um, it just sounded like this guy had a really fun life. And so the first kind of bit of growth mindset that I think I had was just kind of deciding to myself um, that I was going to be, be successful. And the way I did that was just telling people I'm going to be successful. <laughs> I just decided and was like, this dude has an island. I'm going to have an island and just started telling people that. And I figured after a while, you know, as you kind of made more and new friend groups like over time they would just accept that that was the case and that's what happened you know at first you know my my mom up until i made you know a single you know cent online kept saying you know why don't you join the police why don't you do these other you know nice conventional yeah why don't you just get a nice <laughs> stable job um so yeah I, I, until then but I, I just i kept telling people over and over again you know, I was just going to be successful, just saying it like it was a sure thing. And then after a while, as more and more people kind of accept that, mm -hmm. and not only, you know, stop thinking you're crazy, but accept that and then expect that, that, that you will do that, you kind of, it's easier to internalize yourself. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I kind of realized that where I was like, oh, I can just like, if I can convince other people about something about me, they can then convince me about it. Um, so, so that was kind of the start of it. But... Um, and, and, and I guess combined with that, I started uh, I started going to the gym when I was 15 as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that was just a good um, a good practice in in like self discipline because you know it was well me and a friend would go we'd go two or three times a week, but um, it was just you know no one was telling us to go there. We were paying for it you know ourselves, uh, and you know it was just getting up and doing something that like isn't that enjoyable. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, you go and you, you pick up some heavy things and then you're exhausted afterwards. But it's just it's just making yourself do something that you know is good for you. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, no, no one's telling you, no one's saying go to school because it's good for you. Uh, you know, like we just went to the gym. And um, so, yeah, I've, and I've been doing that for, I guess, 12, 12 years as well now. Um, so, yeah, that was that was kind of how I started off. What, like, inspired you at 15 to be like, OK, time to get my ass into the gym? Um, I I don't know. Like I I feel like everything, everything in my life kind of changed when I was fifteen. Um, I recall, um, so in the in the UK at fifteen sixteen, you decide the I think four subjects you want to study whilst you're seventeen eighteen. And I'd kind of picked a lot of easy stuff, even yeah. though I was good at. You know, I, I really enjoyed science and I was good at it and I was quite good at maths and you know, I was good at all like the hard things, but they're obviously hard. And so, you know, what what 15 year old wants to push themselves to do the hard things? 
and I think around that time, maybe a year or so earlier, I'd gone from, I can't remember what documentaries I was watching on TV, but I started watching like lots of space documentaries. Mm -hmm. And so I go into like the, into the career advisor and I was like, I'm pretty sure I want to be an astronaut. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, that's really difficult. And I'm like, yeah, I'm aware, but like, but what do I do? And she's like, okay, so you can, you can join the, you can join the Navy. You can go, or you can join the forces. You can go in as a scientist and that's how you get selected to be an astronaut. Um, despite the fact that the UK picks very few astronauts, but I was like, okay, cool. So I will, one, do all of the hard things because that's what you need to be a scientist. Two, apply for the forces, the Navy as a pilot, because I've got that as my backup. And and when I'd made that decision, I was like, okay, I'm going to actually have to do all these hard things yeah. to do it. And so, I don't know, there, there was all, all of these, all of these things around that age. I was like, I have potential to, you know, be more than a plumber or an electrician. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually going to have to work my ass off if I want that to be the case. Um, so, yeah, all around that time, I was kind of, I don't know, deciding to not just coast through life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. And then what made you, like, want to keep up with, like, health and wellness? Like, you kind of researched the crap out of it. What kind of inspired that? Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's, again, that's less to do with health and wellness and more to do with my brain, where yeah. I just... I need to know everything about <laughs> everything. Um, and so I thought, if I'm doing fitness, like it's just, it's just kind of natural that when you're, you know, if you're going to the gym, you're spending whatever, three hours a week there. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 you know, it's not long before you learn that nutrition is more important than the exercise you do for like composing your body. Yeah. So then obviously I got into nutrition and that's a whole massive field. So then you have to be like, well, what kind of nutrition do I need to look at? And what, what should my diet look like? What food is good? What food is bad? Uh, what exercises are good? What exercises are bad? There are just so many questions around how do I actually get more effective or more efficient or make this time that I'm spending like as worth it as it can be. Mm -hmm. And that's just where my brain goes. So I'm right. just trying to find out every single facet of how do I do that? I did lots of combat sports when I was younger and again so then I'm trying to figure out like what's the best kind of cardio so I can um, you know fight as many rounds as possible or you know how do I eat for that how do I eat to have the most energy all, all these kind of things so I don't know just I think just the nature of me being in the gym and me and, and not being in the gym uh, under guidance not having a personal trainer assigned but having it all on myself made yeah. me think okay how do I you know I, I need to figure out the rest of this yeah and so, you know, over 10 plus years, you just kind of accumulate it. You know, you, you, you get a load of stuff. You go, I'm going to try out doing this. I'm going to try loads of carbs. I'm going to try yeah. no carbs. I'm going to try 1,000 calories a day. I'm going to try 5,000 calories a day. I'm going to, you know, all these different, I'm going to try various different workouts. I'm, I'm going to try working out twice a day. I'm going to, you know, all of these different things. If, you, if, you, if you're doing a sport or activity or whatever for long enough, it's just a matter of time before you build up enough expertise to like know that what works well for you, what works well generally for other people, what works well for most people, mm -hmm. all these kind of stuff. So it's a matter of experience and needing to know. <laughs> needing to know everything. Yeah, and you like took all that experience and knowledge and built a business out of it that you just sold, mm -hmm. women's fitness business. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of learned what worked for other people. And then you were helping on remote year, some of us uh, go to the gym or whine our way through the gyms. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of explain why we do the full body workout, like what kind of got you into that mm -hmm. model? Mm -hmm. So um, I guess as, so a lot of what I'm doing at the moment is trying to figure out how do you uh, not only eat right and work out right but how do you do both of those to get the best hormonal advantage that you can because mm -hmm. if you can recruit um you know uh, more testosterone doing certain exercises or eating certain foods you're going to have an easier time you know it's going to be easier for you to put on on muscle or and lose fat and all of these kind of things mm -hmm. so through yeah through looking at what kind of uh Food, foods do you want to eat, what kind of supplements do you want to have, what kind of workouts do you want to do, I kind of came to full body workouts being very good for, at one, working out the most amount of muscle in any one time, so if you're doing a full body workout, then, you know, kind of by definition, you're, you're tearing up all of your muscles, um, and also doing exercises like deadlifts, squats, bench press, um, 
these also release the most amount of testosterone into your body, which again is good if you want to build muscle and, and lose fat. And so, um, yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of wanted to figure out wh how do we combine all of these into... My program is, is more about how do we get like the best results out of the least amount of time? Yeah. Because we were all traveling. It's very difficult to actually stay in shape when you're traveling, let alone get in better shape. So I had to say, what is what is the best, you know, what what's the best I can do in 40 minutes, three times a week, um, with the least control over my diet possible? Because mm -hmm. you know you're in different countries. Sometimes they uh, don't have any dairy. Sometimes they, you know, there's hardly any meat. You know, all, all these different uh, facets of what is easier to access or isn't when you're traveling. So by doing a full body workout, you get the best hormonal advantage mm -hmm. for, for a workout you can do also by tearing up so much muscle it gives you some leeway in what you eat so your muscle will be starving for uh, you know sugars it will be starving uh, for protein to repair itself and so if you're going to eat crap food the best time to do that is after a full body workout mm -hmm. and so I you know you saw this I ate absolutely anything I wanted to the entire <laughs> yeah. year and managed to stay in shape or get in better shape by making sure that I didn't overeat too much. I wouldn't stuff my face too much or I would eat in smaller time windows or the worst food I ate, I would try to eat after a workout. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and by combining all of those, you know, you can, you, uh, unless you, like you can make, you can get massive results in say three months. Yeah. If you want to really control your diet, really make sure you hit the gym three to five times a week. Like you can get really stunning results. But also, if you're not concerned about getting, you know, ripped or jacked in, you know, six weeks to, to three months, you can take it so much easier. And so if you say, okay, in a year's time, I want to look, you know, I, I want to drop a few percent of body fat, or I want to put on 20, 30 pounds of muscle. Like, mm -hmm. that's an easy thing to do if you just stretch your time frame to a year. Um, and so, yeah, by making it as easy as possible, just like trying to manageable yeah yeah <laughs> expectations yeah exactly <laughs> just trying to get a little bit better but but also i don't know the the culture of the media and, and the industry yeah. is that everyone everyone thinks there's a magical formula that's why everyone has a new you know every time there's a new diet everyone jumps on that because they're like maybe this one will be the one that gets it and what they don't realize yeah. is drop your expectations find something that you can actually stick at for a year because yeah. you're not going to stick at your you know only kale and egg whites diet for, for a year. It's not going to happen. Like all the get ripped abs and two weeks kind of work. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah, yeah. The, the, these things are these things are not going to work. So if you can just find something that one is you know going to be better than you know is is going to move you in the right direction, and you can sustain for as long as possible. You know, as long as you right. need to, then you're going to get in better shape. Easy. Yeah. Well, and you talked a little bit about your eating habits, and I know that you do a lot of intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. It's kind of been talked about, like on Tim Ferriss' show. And mm -hmm. tell mm -hmm. us more about yes. why you do that. Yeah. So one of the so one of my best research um, one of my best research tools was the four hour body that Tim Ferriss did. Yeah. And um, because uh, I mean. I mean, a, a lot of it is quite well backed up and researched. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, so you can't take everything as gospel in there. But what he does is put a focus on what's the best result I can get for the least amount of time in terms yeah. of workouts, in terms of diets. I think he has like a 15-minute workout sign where he, he'll just do deadlifts or just do squats or something something like that. Um, sorry, what was the... <laughs> the question was about, about intermittent fasting and okay, why you do okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, so so, so Tim, Tim's book had mentioned that, and I'd seen it a lot of times. And again, this comes down to the kind of hormonal advantage. Mm -hmm. So um, if um, your body, again, I'm not, a, I'm not a nutritional scientist. Don't quote all of this. But roughly speaking, your body uh, uses fats to make most hormones, things like testosterone. Mm-hmm. And so by intermittent fasting, you kind of drain out, and this is similar to, to um, the keto diet, but just a bit more manageable, where you have, you have quite a lot of carbs stored in your muscles, okay? Yeah. You have, let's say in the ballpark of three to 5,000 calories worth of carbs in your muscles, okay? So you could, you could not eat for a day or two and your, your body would kind of use up those carbs. And when those carbs are done, it would start to use fats. And that's the whole kind of point of, of the, you know, the, yeah. uh, the, the ketone diet. 
is that you exhaust your carbs and then you start running on fats and then your body can produce hormones more efficient with those fats. The, the intermittent fasting is, is kind of a convenient way to not have to go fully into just eating fats and proteins, but you can essentially kind of deplete your stores down. You can get you into a better state for producing hormones, which give you an advantage to make it easier. And also, it's just, it's not that difficult. Um, the first one, two, three, maybe four weeks, yeah, it's going to suck. Um, if you've been, like almost everyone have been eating two, three, four, five times a day for all of your life, it's going to suck and you're going to be hungry, but, but you don't have to go straight into only eating in a four hour window a day, okay? Because that's going to drive you insane. All I, all I do and all I tell people to do is skip out breakfast because that's gen generally speaking, that's the easiest thing to do because sometimes you'll struggle to go to sleep if you're too hungry. Um, if you find that you need breakfast and you can skip you know, your last meal of the day, fine. But generally speaking, skip breakfast and just have some coffee to kind of suppress your hunger or maybe some green tea. And all you want to do is just push back the time until you have your first meal of the day as far as possible. Because after you've slept, you've already got you know, eight, nine, ten hours since the last time you ate, right? right? And so if you can only eat in 12 hours of the day, 10, eight, six hours of the day, you will notice a really big impact um, in not that long. So what you want to do is just push it back. Um, and also a fun part of this is, so I think the longest I've gone without eating anything is, I think it was almost two days. I think it was 40 to 46 hours which is why you would pull that face off. <laughs> but it wasn't actually that bad, and I think I was, I was doing a lot of work or anything, but I think it got to the point where I was like, I might just try and, and not do this. And it was interesting to think how many people nowadays have experienced that. How many people have gone 24 hours without eating something? When there's food absolutely everywhere, it's just kind of an interesting um, little self-challenge to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, don't, don't, don't mistake this for, for starving yourself. In theory, you should be starting to just uh, get through your carb stores and get through some uh, some fat stores without actually degrading your muscles, degrading your you know organs or anything horrible like that. And that's another reason why doing a full body workout can be a good idea. Is because you're you're tearing up all of your muscles. You're basically telling your body, we need all of these muscles to survive. So don't eat those. Uh, so instead, eat your fat, drain out your carb stores. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so for anyone who's like just getting started, it's really overwhelming being on the internet, doing all the research, doing everything. So like, what's some main advice that you would give for anyone who's just kind of getting into it or is trying to change their body? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of, so the, the, the general rules I give people, and there's maybe three or four of them. So I think if you follow these, you're, you're pretty much doing everything that I advise people to do. Mm-hmm. Try swap out breakfast for coffee or green tea and just see how see how far you can close your eating window. Because if you can skip one meal a day, even if the other two meals or the other one meal are much bigger than you would usually eat, you're probably going to be cutting down your calories and getting a bit of a hormonal advantage. So that's one. Two is try to not eat carbs and fats at the same time. Okay, it's not that you don't you shouldn't eat either of them, mm -hmm. but try to eat fats and protein at the same time, or carbs and protein. Because when you eat uh, carbs, you give yourself an insulin spike. And insulin is like the, uh, oftentimes it's seen as bad because it, it, it looks like a, a you know high insulin and insulin resistance is a risk factor for type two diabetes, which obviously isn't good. Right. But insulin is kind of like the little shuttle molecule that moves nutrients around your body. So if you eat uh, carbs, it's gonna spike your insulin. And if you also eat protein, it's gonna shuttle the protein around into your muscles, which is where you want it, which will repair your muscles, get them bigger, or at the very least stop them from uh, breaking down. If you eat carbs and fats at the same time, then it, the, you know, that insulin is gonna shuffle those fats into your fat stores, which is where you don't want them. Um, so if you just try to separate eating those as much as you possibly can, obviously having a bit of carbs or a bit of fats together, you know, isn't gonna like destroy you, but things like, uh, you know, chocolate, try to minimize on that, you know, so, so, so many things combine fatty and sweet and salty, and that's just like mayhem for your body. <laughs> um, 
so that is the second one and the third one I think I think uh, the gym really should be uh, you know like if anyone wants to get in shape, go to the gym and a full body workout is the best and it, and it can be intimidating, but there are there are lots of uh, workout programs and, pl- and plans online to help you with this. There are things like the Smith machine, so it's it's a like a squat bar or a, or a shoulder press bar which is stuck into a frame so that you don't have to worry about dropping it or being crushed under it and you can just kind of stick extra weight on and Mm -hmm. take it easy um if you're scared about doing the bench press you can use some dumbbells so if you if you can't manage it you can stick them down onto the floor or onto your knees or something so i I think you should still you should try to generally speaking avoid most machines because they're not that good and generally speaking do more stuff with barbells but there are ways to do the barbells like with the smith machine um in in a more effective way but if you can do a whole body workout you're gonna get a hormonal advantage you're gonna soak up as many of the as much as the crap food that you eat as possible Mm -hmm. um so yeah i'd say do a full body workout three times a week don't eat fats and carbs at the same time and try to eat for less of the day as possible and again you can work up to it um, yeah, I think I think that that's the best thing to get started. Obviously, from there you can take it in directions of like, okay, I want the food that I eat, I want to make it healthier, all these things. But if you get those three right, you're probably going to get in better shape, mm-hmm. um, which is good. That's what you want. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and talking about the full body workout, I'm going to give an example on the blog post. If you're watching this on YouTube, go to my blog and you'll get like a breakdown of what we do when we go to the gym. Um, but yeah, that's great advice. Another quick question for you. Um, you know, I talk a lot about depression and anxiety on my blog, and I was really impressed with you when you kind of came out with your depression story on your blog, because I don't think enough males are talking about it, and I think it's impressive that you did. Um, kind of share with us a quick thing on your depression and how you've kind of had that motivate your wellness and your mm-hmm. lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Um uh, mine was uh, a- a- actually it, it really it helped me shape up my uh, my entire kind of lifestyle. I kind of constructed my entire life based on this. So um, there was a, a, a relationship which was um, you know it was you know good relationship, lo- lovely girl, but like not something that I wanted to be in. Uh, a job that uh, I thought I wanted, and then got there and was like, oh no, actually I need to do my own business and uh, studying um, physics at university. So I was there for four years. It was a graduate degree. It took a lot of time and I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I enjoy physics a lot, but having to jump through the hoops and do the exams, which essentially comes down to just memorizing uh, questions and answers. And, and you know, it's, it, 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 I felt very trapped having to do, uh, you know, ha- having all of these things. So everything that was making me feel trapped kind of just, uh, crushed me in, in, in this horrible depression um, and and yeah based on that I kind of you know once I got out of all of those situations I had to think how how do I structure my life so I have the most uh, control possible over it um, and so you know I wanted to be uh, location independent I wanted to have enough money that I wasn't worried about that um, I, you know I, 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 I just wanted to uh, to have complete control of my life, to, to go where I want and do what I want, and you know, um, be be in relationships with, with who I wanted, and, and all of these these various things. So, um, yeah, I I, I I I think it can. I think the most important thing is to is to kind of is to admit that you have it, and to talk to people about having it. Like I think being open about it is a super important thing to do. Because at the very least, it gets you in a proactive kind of mindset. Um, it's you know it's something that that can be you know fixed, so to speak. It's something that you doesn't have to run your life. You can you can start detecting the warning signs of it. You can you know con- you know try to construct your life in ways where you are less likely to experience bouts of it. Where if you do experience bouts of it, you can deal with it. You can be like, cool, I'm gonna chill out and take one, two, three days off. That, that, that kind of stuff but I think the most important thing was just talking about it being open about it and, and kind of getting the conversation going and kind of admitting to myself that I was like oh god I think I do have depression so I you know need to know everything about everything I started reading I read 
textbooks, and I was reading all these different things, and, and you know, some of them had you know, techniques and, and things like that to help you with it, but a lot of it was just understanding it felt like I had a control over it. I felt I had, you know, I understood the mm-hmm. biological reasons why it might exist, the sociological reasons why it might exist, my own situation and why I was likely feeling it and how I should try to get out of that situation and how and, and, and you know, all of these kind of things. But um, I, I think um, super unpleasant. I would not wish it on anybody, but I don't think I would change having it. I think. Um, I think it can give you a real sense of empathy when you felt such like a deep, horrible misery, just a, like a, a like a horrible nothingness. It's 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 so much easier to empathise with people. I think it's made me yeah more more caring for other people regardless of their situation. Um, and um, yeah, it's just it's just a really it's a good motivator. You know, I know if I'm not doing what I want to, you know, if I'm not doing the right thing. Um, it's going to bite me in the ass, and there's only so long I can go before that's going to happen. Right. Um, so I think just, just you know, if you're, if you're feeling heavy or or panicked, or you feel like you're kind of underwater, or you feel like you know, like a, you know, you've got this kind of dull ringing in your ears, and everything's, you know, you feel like you're wading through tar, then you might be depressed, and it might be because there's a situation that, that you feel trapped in, maybe you've got debt, maybe you don't like your job, maybe you don't like your relationship, you know, all these kind of things that make you feel trapped. Um, like, maybe maybe you're depressed, and maybe you need to speak to someone about it, maybe you need to look at medication, maybe you need to look at psychiatry, but but there, there are lots of things you can do to kind of get a grip on it, but I think the most important thing is just to be like, I think I'm depressed, let's do something yeah. about this. Yeah, well, and um, similar to me, you've also kind of mentioned how, like, depression can kind of slowly creep back in and now that you recognize it you can kind of Mm -hmm. as you're noticing it into your life you can be more proactive about kind of calming it back down but also letting yourself sit in in that feeling Mm -hmm. and trying to understand why so what what do you do when it starts to come up for you a little bit yeah well well what we've amusingly seen is the first thing i do is i just go to the gym because that's that that's the easiest explanation is i haven't done enough exercise that's what i'm feeling uh, grumpy or, or unsocial or just you know that, that 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 that's the first thing that comes is that I don't I don't feel underwater or horrible I just don't feel particularly outgoing and just doing some exercise is generally the problem but but yeah. what I actually the, the the most important thing and um, yeah I, I I journal every day and so what I will do is if if there's something wrong I will write down okay what are what are all the potential problems that I have at the moment? Okay, if, I, if I'm actually feeling bad, I'm like, what are all the potential problems? And providing I've been to the gym, which you know can just get rid of it in a snap, um, I can see what those problems are. Then I'll see, okay, which of these are actually, you know, which of these do I have some control over? Which of these can I actually do something about? Um, and so, say if I haven't been on like an adventure or something for, for too long. I'll be like, okay, well this weekend I need to go out, I need to go do a hike or, or whatever. So that, it can be as simple as that. But you'll see that like some of them are, you know, maybe it's, uh, oh, you know, I, I met someone I, I really liked and, and now, I, now I've now i left the country. Um, that's like, okay, well that's a good reason. That might make you feel upset, but also, you know, you've made the decision to do that, you know, that's the right decision. So there can be things that like, are gonna make you feel a bit shitty, but they're, you know, you've made that decision and you're confident that that is right. So mm-hmm. kind of laying out all of these and like seeing which of these can I fix and which of these do I know is right regardless of, of how it makes me feel. And then solving them, you know, you go through them and so I have the same process, I do it over and over again, I write out my problems, <laughs> I go and solve them. Um, and and, and that, that's kind of the, the best I can do. Yeah. Um, Yes, I mean, sometimes they'll, you know, again, sometimes this is more difficult than it thinks. You know, if you've got a job you don't like, then it can be difficult to get out of that. And how do you end up not going into another job that you don't like? But um, that, I think that's the process for it. It's, it's, very, it's being very rapid to analyze yourself. And this is, this is why I try to get better and better is, is sometimes I would go two, three weeks without realizing that I feel awful um, and actually doing some self-analysis. But now two, three days maximum before I'm like, okay, I don't feel that good. I should, I should try to figure out what's up. Yeah. Um, Just kind of spending time reflecting and being with yourself and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. I preach that a lot on the blog, obviously. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I think, I think, I think self-reflection is probably the most important thing you can do. Health, wellness, 
success, business, like a, a, any of these areas, self-reflection is good because you can figure out why you feel certain ways, what you actually want, what you care about. And, and just by doing this over and over and over again, you'll turn up new stuff uh, and you'll actually be able to, be able to make sure that, um, you know, the, you know you're, you're working to help yourself get better. You're trying to um, prevent feeling uh, bad, providing that's a good idea. Um, and you can, you know, make sure that what you're working on and what you're doing is actually leading you to what you enjoy. So I think self-reflection is probably the, the, the single biggest thing you can do. And it can be as simple as journaling for five minutes in the morning. Yeah. And also it makes a nice log of your stuff. So if you want to <laughs> write blog posts or whatever, you can look through, but back through it and be like, oh, cool, here's some good ideas. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing something so personal to you. I think that kind of wraps up my questions on like health and wellness. So we'll finish this video up, uh, but tune in for next week. We'll be doing more about the business and lifestyle um, stuff. Connor's an entrepreneur and we're kind of going to dive into what that lifestyle looks like. So join us again next week.